comes in here thinking that a win tonight against Martinez will set him up very well in the course of the next year for pure things. Well, that explains why he's been out of the ring for so long. you got to let that cut heal up. You know, it takes some time for that scar tissue to really develop and become strong over that eye. Wow. Cortez already getting off to a fast start. Pressuring Mart Martinez in that corner. Martinez has been out of the ring for some time. Cortez and his brother, I should say, they know. So they're coming out to test his chin early. His brother Luis is his trainer. That was his inspiration in life. Started going to the gym to watch his brother train when he was only four years old. His brother went on to be a three-time national champion as an amateur. Actually had an amateur win against Jose Ramirez. Yeah, his brother's been by his side his entire career, Tess. Been an inspiration to him, to Cortez. Has taken over his training regime. Is his manager as well. They live together. They do everything together. I know you often talked about the unique relationship that father-son trainer fighter has, and it's come with some criticism from you in recent years. What do you make the dynamic of brothers as trainer fighter? It's a bit difficult at times. Um, it's family. Uh, his last time out when he suffered his cut, his brother Luis, he made a poor decision in trying to stop the match. Wasn't sure. He showed that he wasn't an uh, experienced corner or a coach. Uh, and he got a, a bit emotional, I saw in the corner. You know, panicked a little bit. That's something you can't do in a fight, especially in the corner. You can't panic when you see blood. But he told us in the fighter meetings that it was a, a well-learned lesson and that he'll be better moving forth. Martinez on the other side is trained by veteran Robert Garcia previously trained by Ray Woods we'll get more into that conversation in a moment as both men want to get to the inside trying to come over the top with that right hand was Cortez almost getting the elbow involved there but the story with Xavier Martinez is a unique one he was very emotional very reflective when we met with him yesterday sent off balance for a moment there in the production meetings as we come to the end of round one Mark Kriegel with more on that Mark the loneliest place in the world. Obviously inside there's air conditioning, but even at 111 degrees, everybody is dealing with the heat this week. You're coming and going uh, from training to restaurants to hotel. It, you just can't avoid it. Um, and obviously guys that want to stay as fresh, as hydrated as possible, as you see in the locker there. We prepare for our main event, Sinisa Estrada. Super bad returns. She's 24 and 0, the unified champion at 105 pounds. A lot of waiting going on from Martinez. He's having a hard time finding his rhythm. He's been out of range some time. Um, Cortez, on the other hand, is is using his jab, using a subtle movement, and then sliding in behind the right hand getting inside and trying to rough up Martinez. Martinez with the two-punch combination. See, Mar Martinez is a natural counterpuncher. He, he waits for offense to come. But again, tonight, we didn't warn him right there for the hit in the back of the head. Cortez has a, is known for hitting behind the head. He's been warned several times in fights for hitting behind the head. We call those rabbit punches. Had a right hand to the body moments ago that was pretty effective as Martinez ties up on the inside. Tony Weeks, the veteran referee, will separate them.
Now you're starting to see a different Martinez. Now he's starting to come forward. He's trying to initiate some offense, but he's trying to keep his spacing right. He doesn't run the rush in there and get in the firing range. He's trying to keep his distance right, and he's trying to time. He's looking for time to rush. As you just saw with that right hand trying to go over the Cortez. top. And the left hook is a shot that he looks for. Cortez now steps to him here to close out with a good exchange here at the end of two. Martinez comes back with a right hand against Cortez. So the pace quickens at the end of two. Go on. The app, if you want to go back and watch the replay of that conversation between Mark Kriegel and Devin Haney, the replay we just saw. There is no way that that was intended as a punch. No, there not was at a, all. Because he's so close to the target on the infighting yes. that there's no way that the accuracy was off and that that was possibly intended to be a punch. No, no, no. That, that, was, that was done deliberately, one. Two, the referee, if you saw, he was on the opposite side, so he couldn't see that forearm. And the other thing to note there in what is somewhat of a veteran move is the position of Tony Weeks, the referee. Yes. The position of Tony Weeks, the referee, also makes you say that was not intended to be an accurate punch. Right. Absolutely. You saw that his back was curled around. Tony couldn't necessarily see all the way over to the other side as to what was happening when that was thrown. Round number three here, total punches to this point. Cortez with a 33-18 to 18 advantage. Bernardo, we mentioned the fact that Robert Garcia is the new trainer of Xavier Martinez. What have you picked up there? Well, I spoke with Robert, and he says, look, I just told Xavier, Andres Cortez is not a boxer, so you've got to pressure him, but you can't do it throwing one shot at a time. You've got to throw combinations to break him down. It's interesting uh, because Martinez, again, is a natural counterpuncher. He likes to wait for offense to come his way so he can counter. Stop, stop. But tonight, he's going to have to make up his mind. He's going to have to get down and dirty and get into the trenches and bag up Cortez. Listen to Robert Garcia because as he started moving forward that last round, he was having a little success against Cortez. Near a clash of heads on the inside. Told you what happened last time there was a clash of heads with Cortez. Comes with the right hand to the body again before falling in and tying up. That's his exit. That's his exit. And I've seen it multiple times already for Cortez. Stop, stop. Below, below. Watch it now. Uppercut should be waiting on him. If you have a high boxing IQ, you'll recognize that if your opponent does that several times, now you know, oh, that's how he's going to do Right hand. All right, I got a right hand uppercut waiting on you when you dip low. As soon as I see you stop, change stop. that level, right uppercut is coming. Anytime Martinez allow Cortez to dictate and initiate the offense, never looks good for him. He's having a hard time responding with the volume of Cortez. Hey, let's take a look. Brutal loss. Yes. Uh, against a world-class fighter, a guy who goes on to be a uh, world champion, Robesi stop, Ramirez. Stop, stop, I got you. How you respond after a loss by that? Mark brought it up earlier. We were discussing it earlier. Nova's responded beautifully. Yes, it was. It's, it's all about being resilient. You know, Tess, but you got to go through some things to get better, to change some things. But you have to stay strong and you have to stay resilient because not everything's going to be perfect. And when you have bumps along the way, if you stay focused and you stay positive and you believe in yourself, good things can happen. Well, a bump along the way, that's exactly what happened to Leonella Udica. She is coming up in our main event, taking on the challenge of facing Sinisa Superbad Estrada. There she is. She's relaxed, smiling back in the locker room. Well experienced no, 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 as the stop. former flyweight world champion. Had an eight-year run as a champion. Then last October, her lone career loss comes to San Diego, puts her belt on the line, and loses a split decision she loses so now she comes back and gets this spot in really a spotlight spot a main event against one of the biggest stars in all of women's boxing we will see what Yudika 
offers up the 34 year old from Argentina coming up in our world title fight as we are halfway through round number four between Cortez stop, stop. and Martinez. See, of course, Cortez style isn't pretty to the eyes. Not pretty to the eyes, Tess. You know, he's a scrapper. I call him a scrapper. Likes to get down and dirty. Get to good the short that left was. hand on the inside by Martinez. It sure was. He got caught standing straight up inside the pocket. Martinez timed him perfectly with that shot. And then a 2-1 combination from Martinez. So now he's stepping to Cortez and clearly affected him here in round four, Timmy. Yeah, Cortez right now is, is trying to recover, trying to clear his head. Fighting off the back foot right now, but not running. Stop. That tells you right there that he's okay. He's recovered. But just trying to get his feet underneath him and trying to set up his next attack. No, 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 no. Watch the back. Watch it. Yes, Chopping right hand comes down from Cortez as Martinez crossed that threshold Stop. of no, no, no. mid-range. Man, those looping right hands behind the head. Oh, that was a real oh, body good shot short right body there. shot. Yes, it was. Stepped Stop. forward, Salt was so available and just placed it. Heard that thud against the left flank of Martinez. Well scored by Cortez. Stop, stop, stop. Here we go. So what I was saying before he got rocked. Cortez, he has his way of fighting. He has a good, a, a good style. It's not eye appealing, but he's tactically sound. He knows where to be and what to do at the right fun moments. That's an entertaining fourth round. Cortez with a 60 to 44 connect advantage, according to CompuBox. If I'm Martinez, I'm telling. If I'm his coach, I'm telling him stop, right stop, now, stop, son, I you ain't got you. nothing stop. to lose. You got everything to gain, son. We've been here before. You've been down and out. Let's not forget about that. Let's move forward and let's let these hands go. This could be your last opportunity. So stop. let's put it all on the line tonight. Mark Priegel, how do you have it scored early? 38, 38, two rounds apiece. But I have Martinez coming on, winning the last two rounds. He started jabbing effectively in the third. And I love that short left hand he came up with last round. I think you heard him just a little bit. Listen, he knew what was coming. Xavier Martinez did. He says, Cortez is going to try to dirty it up. I agree with Robert Garcia. He's got to throw more than just a jab. He's got to throw combinations. Mark references the short left hand on the inside. That was one of 36 power punches that Martinez threw in that land. He was 11 of 36. High total numbers so far for Martinez in that last round for total punches and power punches. No, 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 stop. No, no, stop, stop. No, no, no. Tim, you make the point that if you're Robert Garcia, you would advise Martinez, hey, just let the hands go. You got nothing to lose. And then consider the story that we've been telling about Martinez of what happened in his life of having a baby, losing his house, the financial pressures of, you know, being very honest with us in terms of where his mental health was at the time. And then he sees this as a potential life-changing opportunity. Uh, turn to us yesterday, listen, I got to bite down and do my job. It plays into what you're saying. The risk-reward factor has to be gauged at a higher threshold. Yes, it is. And right now, he's coming on strong right now, and I think he's feeling it. He has to see the sea legs back, and I'm talking about Martinez because he's been out of the ring for some time. You, typically, it takes about four rounds to get your sea legs, get back in there, getting used to getting hit with big shots with eight-ounce gloves. Stop, stop. But now he has his wits about him. He's moving forward, and he's trying to land more offense. See, those are moments right there where you he's going to wish he can have back because when you have your man near the ropes, you want to try to pin him against the ropes. In that time, he let Cortez just roll right back in the center of the ring when he had perfect opportunity to attack him and pin him against the ropes. Halfway through our six years old. At eight years old, Sinisa Estrada started 
with the amateur fights. She never stopped, and she has just gotten better and better. Yes, there was a time in her pro career where, because of promotional issues, she was shelved. She's talked about that, but she came out last time, signs this big contract with Topper. I thought she was flawless last time out. That performance we saw back in March when she gathered another belt here at 105 pounds. She is on a roll momentum now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it all starts from the beginning, Tess. That's what it starts from. She started boxing at a young age, you know, and her opponent started boxing at 19 years old. So she has natural instincts that she's developed inside the gym, sparring tons of rounds with girls, I'd be over with women, girls when she was younger, and also young men and boys. So, you know, female boxing has taken off to a different level. She had over 100 amateur fights. That, some of the guys that fight don't have over 100 amateur fights. And that shows her experience and her knowledge of the game and why she's where she's at today. Here in the midst of round number six, critical fight for these two men, Andres Cortez and Xavier Martinez. And then we will have our world title fight, the WBA, WBC minimum weight world championship as super bad. Sinisa Estrada looks to defend her titles. Good work right there from Martinez. Slipping shots, coming back with his own offense, marching forward. Stop. There's another right hand to that left eye of Martinez as Cortez. And look at that. You can see the pronounced swelling and the discoloration around that left eye of Xavier Martinez. I like the adjustment for Martinez. Now he's attacking the body of Cortez. He's shooting shots to the chest and also down to the body just to make contact. And he's trying to take the legs and weaken Cortez. Right hand comes in as Cortez was backing up, went straight back into that neutral corner. Garcia's right. Cortez doesn't like to fight well. He can fight off his back foot, but it's not his strong suit. He does better when he's moving forward. That's Robert Garcia, trainer for Xavier Martinez. End of sin about what it takes to have success when he's so close. He said, I see a picture of a guy digging for diamonds, and he just turns around when he was so close, when the diamond was within range. This is where the mental aspect yes. of boxing takes control. In a fight like this, Absolutely. it's had a lot of even moments. We saw the copy box. You heard what Mark said about scoring this fight. You can see it right in front of you. Now it's time just to dig a little more to find that diamond. That's right. You're absolutely right, Tess. Moments like this, fighters dream of. We dream of moments like this. When all odds is against us, we've had a tough road to get to where we are. You got to embrace these moments. And you got to come out on the other side. It's going to make you a better fighter. It's going to make you a better person and a better man moving forward. Bernardo, what's the messaging in the Cortez corner? They see what we're seeing, that the come that Martinez is coming on. So he says, look, we got to work behind the jab. It's a close fight, but we're going to close it out. Look at that eye now, that left eye of Martinez. That just happened while Bernardo was giving his report that the swelling got much worse and then on the last punch you could see blood start now so now all that swelling with the abrasion has now turned into a, a paint of painted red down the left side of the face of Xavier Martinez it is opened up to a cut stop, stop, stop. Stop. Let him out. see these are moments where fighters you got to be able to adjust. That lead eye is the is in front to be hit with right hands, the power shots, or jabs. Why don't you switch southpaw? That's why it's important for you to have a full arsenal. Be able to do it from both ways. Put that eye on the back, the back end. Keep it out of danger. 
Look at the face of Martinez. Yeah, nasty. No, no. Starting to see a lot of the young guys actually resulting to that. They, they are actually turning southpaw. They're learning how to fight. It's, I call it like the Terrence Crawford syndrome. Mm -hmm. Everybody's starting to do it now. Sinisa Estrada is a switch hitter. Oh, my and, gosh. You know, she, she actually started off as a southpaw, then went right-handed. But, I mean, she does it effortlessly, and it becomes so natural to her. Stop, stop. Let him up. Let him up. Cortez boxing well off his back foot. End of seven. It's over. 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 No more. Yeah, no more. Oh, Robert Garcia is stopping it. Robert Garcia is stopping it. He will not send Martinez out. The doctor came up to the apron, inspected the cut, and I believe the doctor, if I heard it correctly, said, I've looked at it, it's okay, it's under the eye. And yet the trainer, the corner, with the veteran Robert Garcia, said, no, it's over. I, I, I would hate, because it wasn't in a bad spot. Las Vegas, this fight comes to a halt at the conclusion of the seventh round at the request of the blue corner. Therefore, your winner by technical knockout, and still, U.S. WBC Silver Junior Lightweight Champion, Andres Savage Cortez.